Hello, this is Sickle Yield, and I'm here to talk about fog planes and filling a large volume with fog. This is a very particular technique that every set doesn't necessarily need, but when you do need it, you really need it. And in Daz Studio and iRay at the present time, you can't use a literal volume to fill that space because at the moment, we don't have a way to get good billowy edges on fog or smoke or haze volumes. They can look really great when you want to fill an entire space without seeing the edges of the fog, but when you need to see the edges of fog or smoke, you're going to have to use an alternate technique. Here is one that I've used. It's very old and simple, but it still works. So, here in Daz Studio, I've loaded Genesis 3 Mail and one of my all-time favorite sets, The Drowning Pool, and I've removed the water from it and I've translated it over to where it's under him at the origin. I always work at the origin even if that requires moving props rather than moving figures to where the surfaces of the props are. This just saves a lot of time in the long run. I'm going to go to Blender here and I've already created some of these but I'll show you how I did it. You just use very primitive simple shapes so I'm going to go to Create and Plane I'm working at Daz Studio scale, so it's much, much larger than the Blender default scale, but anyone can work at whatever scale they like, it doesn't matter. So I've got this plane, rotate it 90 degrees, and I'm gonna scale it down a little bit. I'm also going to subdivide it, but I don't know if that's even really necessary, given that smoothing of this piece will not really make any difference in our scene. It's 100% going to act as a 2D sort of billboard for us. We're not even going to use any refraction or anything like that that would uh, increase render time. So I'm going to duplicate that. Use G, Y to move the duplicate forward. Left click to fix it in place. Then press A twice to select everything and control N to redirect my normals outward. Now I'm going to give this a simple UV in the UV image editor down here. U project from view, there we go. That's the right shape. So then I'm gonna translate that upward and move the second plane downward so that they're on the same template but are not together. And I will use UVs, export UV layout. To create a ping of this. And before I export the mesh itself, then I will set origin, the origin to geometry to make it easier to move. And I will use file, export, Wavefront OBJ and SY Fog Plane 01. And I've got my operator preset for Dad Studio saved, and hopefully by this time so do you. You do that by selecting all of these things that I have checked here. Um, selection only, apply modifiers, include edges, write normals, include UVs, write materials, and polygroups. And keep vertex order, uncheck everything else. And you can hit the plus sign up here to create a new preset. So then hit export OBJ, and you can import this into Daz Studio as a wavefront file, import. And I'll just navigate to where that is. And I used the Daz Studio import scale, so that's what I have selected here. Okay, there's my great big fog plane. This is the first one I did, so it's bigger than the one that I just showed you, but I'm going to go to surfaces, and I have a IRA Uber base saved out to my scripts here. You can create anything as a script dialog by right clicking on it and choosing create custom action. So I did that with a bunch of shader things and base genesis 3 male and female, etc. So now that I have that and I have my exported template, I'm going to go to the GIMP. Any other 2D editor that you happen to have or use, and I will open the template that I created. So now I have the template as part of an XCF file. I'll save to the I'll save. And then when I've saved, I've got a flooded black thing here and a layer above that. Now I'm going to paint above it with smoke brushes. And I'm going to paint black because that's easier for me to visualize, but it doesn't really matter what you do in that regard. You can invert it later or not. So I've got Ron's detail smoke here, but any smoke brushes will do. You can get free ones from the internet. You can get inexpensive ones from Obsidian Dawn. Ron's are just very nice and lovely, so I use those. And then you also use the smudge tool 
so that then the brushes themselves are not identifiable and you're not uh, ripping off any of Ron's work directly. That's Divine from the Daz 3D store. And so eventually you get an image of smoke here that's entirely grayscale. And when you've got that, um, you can go colors invert to make it white, put it on a black background. Now the white areas form more opaque areas and the black areas form more transparent areas. And I will export that as a JPEG. And I will go to my fog plane in Daz Studio and go to the cutout opacity. And I will go and load my fog plane texture that I've just created as the cutout opacity. Now I've got this layer of fog. Now this is a vertical layer, so it's more for being seen from the front or side. And you can save that to the library using file, save as, support asset, figure prop asset, as you probably already know. All right, now the yelling cat has been pacified. Now we're back to Blender, and I've done the same technique by adding a circle instead of a plane, and I just duplicated it vertically instead of horizontally, created another simple UV map, and exported that as another OBJ. So this will be the one that we have for viewing from above. And in a very large volume, bigger than this pool, what I would do is I would duplicate this across the surface, which I will demonstrate momentarily here after I've created the transparency map for this particular plane. And I'm going to use the same technique that I used before, where I paint directly onto the template in the GIMP, or, you know, the 2D editor of your choosing. So I'm going to cut, and I'll be back when I've done that. All right, I'm back, and I've created my second transparency map. So I'm going to apply that to the cutout opacity of the material of my exported OBJ of the round plane. There we go. Now I've got a fog surface for the top of my pool, as well as a fog plane for showing tendrils of fog. And because these are such simple primitives, it should be relatively easy to scale and position them. They don't impose a lot of demands on my scene in terms of geometry, which is good because this giant set that I'm using certainly does. Now, the other technique that I wanted to discuss and explain was that now that I've got these two things in my scene, I can move them around and duplicate them to create a more randomized appearance. So I've scaled down my fog plane 03 there and moved it over to the side, and I'm going to go to create and new node instances and five. Node instances are other versions of this that are not that same thing but are copies of it and because Death Studio doesn't exactly see these as real, they don't impose the same system load as if I loaded it from the library over and over again. So I can position these around in my pool to give it a more random organic appearance without having a really tiled looking texture visible to the user. Having them be different scales also helps disrupt that uniform look or even put them at slightly different heights from each other, just as patches of real fog will be at somewhat different heights. Okay, now I've got this man in a pool full of fog. Let's see how that looks in a quick test render. So I'm going to change the draw style of my viewport to NVIDIA iRay, and I may need to cut while that renders. Okay, I went ahead and rendered to a new window, and here's what I got. 
you can see that that back plane actually kind of look like, looks like it's billowed in among the jars from this angle, even though it's a straight vertical plane behind Genesis 3 male. And you can see my layered fog with those five instances and the original base in front. So this is a very quick, easy, workable technique. It renders pretty fast. And it's a very good alternative to literal volume haze using the SSS method. That's all there is to it. Thanks for listening, and happy rendering.